And we'll take the heat for our mistakes, but this is a little out of control. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 celebrity careers ruined by morons. We know that we're gonna go through issues, but it's gonna be totally worth it in the end. For this list, we'll be looking at stars whose professional lives were hurt by false accusations, overblown incidents, or by being outspoken about their beliefs. We'll include celebrities who were later vindicated or saw a major career resurgence. What famous personalities do you think had their careers damaged unfairly? Show us your support in the comments. Number 10. Janet Hubert Janet Hubert is best recognized as Aunt Viv from the first three seasons of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Hey, Aunt Viv! Hi. How are you doing? Hi! <laughs> Let me look at you. When Hubert initially rejected the contract she was given for the fourth season, she expected a renegotiation. Instead, Hubert was replaced. You know, Miss Banks, since you had that baby, there's something different about you. <laughs> She blamed this devastating turn of events on her rough working relationship with Will Smith. What made the contract rejection even worse was that she was labeled as being difficult in post-show interviews. I think Will simply needed to win, and I think sometimes when you get caught up in a lie, and those things never happened. She never left the set, I never left the set. We got along great. In the wake of this turn of events, Hubert struggled to land recurring roles for nearly a decade. After almost 30 years had passed, the fictional aunt and nephew reconciled during a reunion special for the show. Smith apologized for his actions and acknowledged his lack of empathy for Hubert's difficulties. I could not do a 30-year celebration of this show and not celebrate you. Number 9. Jenna Cooper At the end of the fifth season of Bachelor in Paradise, Jenna Cooper had everything she'd hoped for. Jenna Cooper. <sighs> I'm madly in love with you. Will you marry me? Yes. Fellow contestant Jordan Kimball had proposed, and they were set for a happily ever after. However, everything changed when popular blogger Steven Reality Steve Carbone released scandalous screenshots. They allegedly showed text messages between Cooper and another man. She soon saw her fiancé break off their engagement, while others attacked her character and integrity. I don't think there is a form of justice possible. I think that could, that could heal or fix me completely or my family who unfortunately had to deal with that which I which I hate because I wish I just could have taken it all when the texts were proven to be fake reality Steve removed them from his site and apologized for the inaccurate images unfortunately his apologies came after Cooper had to endure a lot of criticism but I just kind of took it I was just like I don't know what to do this isn't true but what can I say and I did not feel any support from them at all. Number 8. Jake Lloyd Jake Lloyd raced into the public's eye as the young Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. You're a Jedi Knight, aren't you? What makes you think that? I saw your laser sword. Only Jedis carry that kind of weapon. Although he was only 10 when it was released, many fans took their dislike of the film out on the child actor. The excessive attention led to negative criticism from both the press, but also his peers. At first, Lloyd voiced the character for games and attended cons. I get some pretty crazy questions, and um, I get uh, a lot of a lot of people asking me a lot of random stuff. Uh, most people just want to say hi and um, hang out for a bit and sign an autograph, get an autograph signed. But he ultimately retired from acting in 2001 for his own mental well-being. After being arrested for a violent incident in 2015, Lloyd was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and placed in a psychiatric facility. In 2020, his family took over his care and hoped he would soon regain his happy personality. People think showbiz kids were used to rejection. You know, we don't mind it when you criticize the way that we are, look, think, act. But we're still kids, man. Number 7. Lance Bass 
Lance Bass rose to fame as a member of the pop boy band NSYNC. In 2001, he further explored his teen heartthrob status by starring in the romantic comedy On the Line. After years in the public spotlight, he appeared on a 2006 cover of People magazine to announce he was gay. Bass genuinely wanted to share this news with fans so they'd know him better. My niece and nephews, they were really little when I came out. I remember the first thing that they said, they, they didn't understand it. They're like, why is this a big deal? They could not comprehend why people cared about us being gay and why it would be so big to put you on the cover of people. But his open declaration also allegedly cost him some business opportunities right away. Fortunately, Bass was able to weather negative opinions and keep working steadily in various mediums. And in 2021, he and his husband, Michael Turchin, announced that they were the parents of twins Violet and Alexander. The couple welcomed twins via surrogate, a baby boy and a baby girl. Number 6. Orlando Bowen Orlando Bowen was an up-and-coming Canadian football player. After three seasons with the Argos and a year with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Orlando signed a new contract extension. This must have been an amazing time in your lives. Yeah. He had just signed a new contract. You guys have a baby on the way. Yeah. Does life get better than that? One night in 2004, he was ready to celebrate a new contract with friends. While waiting outside a nightclub, he was approached by two plainclothes police officers who asked if he had illegal substances. He insisted he didn't have any several times before they forcefully took him down to the ground and arrested him. You know, I'm face down there on the pavement and I'm thinking, I can't believe my life is going to end like this. After the harrowing incident, he was arrested for drug possession and resisting arrest. But Bowen was finally cleared when one of the arresting officers was convicted of the same crime the player was. Unfortunately, the concussion he got during the attack stopped him from returning to the sport. My playing days were, were done. It shouldn't be like this, but that was our reality. He now works as a motivational speaker who talks about hope and forgiveness. Number 5. The Chicks in the early 2000s, the group formerly known as the Dixie Chicks had multi-platinum albums and a stellar reputation among country fans. But time makes you bolder, children get older. However, things majorly changed during a 2003 concert when lead singer Natalie Maines was critical of the Iraq War. She also said, quote, Just so you know, we're ashamed the President of the United States is from Texas. Her comments sparked a ton of backlash against the band. Hundreds of stations simply stopped playing the songs they had celebrated over and over again hours before. I love their songs, but I don't agree with what they did. Thank y'all for pulling the Dixie Chicks, and I think we should be just as embarrassed for them. Although Maines went on to say she had faith in the military, it didn't help matters much. After the comments, they received less radio play, saw concert sales dip, and got death threats in the U.S. They took a hiatus before returning and finding success once more. I think after the whole controversy, and that feels like eons ago, but we were pretty worn out at the same time. And um, I don't know, I think we needed a break. Maybe not 14 years, but we, we need to just get mad again. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. have something to write about. Number four, Ashley Judd. Ashley Judd's movie career was on the rise in the 90s. She was praised for her roles in hit movies like Heat and 2002's Frida. La noche irá. But after the latter film, she seemed to get less and less leading roles. The reasoning behind this trend became clear in 2018 when Judd sued Miramax executive Harvey Weinstein for harassment and defamation. I also talked with my dad and when I talked with my mom, I told her what I was thinking about doing and she said, Go get him. She claimed that after rejecting his advances during the filming of Kiss the Girls, he'd spread lies that ruined her career. Film director Peter Jackson also reported he didn't cast Judd in The Lord of the Rings because of Weinstein's comments. Although Judd hasn't hit the career heights she once had, she's been praised by many for exposing horrible behavior. We all do the best we can, and our best is good enough. And it's really okay to have responded however we responded. Number three, John Garfield. John Garfield was one of the most popular Hollywood actors of the 30s and 40s. You drop this? 
He was nominated for Academy Awards, entertained troops overseas during World War II, and was a box office star. In 1951, Garfield was caught up in the communist scare and had to testify before the House Committee on Un-American Activities. It's 1941 is when he's first put on a list. But then starting in 1943, they start doing surveillance on him. When asked to name suspicious people, the actor didn't single anyone out. He declared, quote, I am a Democrat by politics, a liberal by inclination, and a loyal citizen of this country by every act of my life. After Garfield's testimony, he remained largely blacklisted and rejected by Hollywood studios for the rest of his life. How much evidence did they compile that John Garfield had been a member of the Communist Party? Zero. Number two, Mira Sorvino. After Mira Sorvino won Best Supporting Actress for Mighty Aphrodite, she expected her career to take off. And I remember thinking to myself, I like acting. I want to study. But a few years later, she was still struggling to grab comparable roles. Sorvino believes that one major reason behind her struggles was due to Harvey Weinstein. After she rejected the exec's advances, she found that her prospects were being limited. Everyone was just kind of comforting about it. and. I didn't really understand the law and I didn't I didn't think I was important enough to make a big deal over so I just kind of tried to put it to the side. Sorvino eventually shared her story with the New Yorker in 2017. While she expected to take another big career hit, people largely came out in support of her. In the 2020s alone, Sorvino has become more in demand for big TV roles. We're not calling anyone. We're going to work something out with them. Oh, you can't make me cooperate. What are you talking about? Don't let you do what? No. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Reuben Hurricane Carter Reuben Hurricane Carter was a world-famous boxer aiming for the World Middleweight Boxing Championship. In 1966, he was arrested and charged for taking the lives of three people. I knew that I was innocent. I knew that I was not in prison for murder. I knew that. Although there was no forensic evidence to tie him to the crime, he still spent over a decade in prison. Many people believed in Carter's innocence throughout the ordeal. Bob Dylan even wrote the song Hurricane to bring more attention to this injustice. Here comes the story of the hurricane. The man the authorities came to play. Finally, in 1988, a judge declared that the prosecution was, quote, based on racism rather than reason and concealment rather than disclosure. What I felt at that moment was. Anything in this world can be done if you've got commitment and you've got the people to do it. After his release, Carter served as the executive director of the Association in Defense of the Wrongly Convicted. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.